math and beats this video is a video on quantifiers so what's a quantifier well in short a quantifier is a symbol that we use to represent some part of a statement it helps us write statements in a much condensed form using these symbols quantifier a symbol to represent a part of a statement here's a couple common quantifiers first of all the universal quantifier this symbol kind of looks like an upside down capital A and that literally means the phrase for all the existential quantifier this thing here kind of looks like a backwards capital E that means the phrase there exists so we're going to use these in some examples here's an example consider the statement for all values of X look at the word this phrase here for all for all values of X there exists a value of y how can we write that using the quantifiers that we just talked about the universal quantifier and the existential quantifier we would write like so right here that symbol for all and then of course x this symbol there exists and then a y for all x there exists a value y there you go see see how long that is to write in words and then if you just write that statement down below using the quantifiers much less space taken up an advantage all right another common quantifier symbol that we use is the phrase such that and we're going to use the symbol right here that means such that kind of like a backwards E again, but it's more curved this time like so. Note this other statement. It's just for fun, kind of. Sometimes people use ST for such that. But, <clears throat> excuse me, that's more of like an abbreviation, not really a quantifier. So we like that backwards E looking symbol for such that. Now here's another example. Consider this example. For all values of x, there exists a value of y so that, or such that, x minus y is 0. Now, before I show you the way to represent this statement using quantifiers right below, just kind of go through the sentence and pick out some stuff. We see a for all. That's the symbol for all. Values of x for all values of x. There's this phrase here there exists use that quantifier some value of y so a y now this such that or so that this backwards e looking symbol x minus y is zero piece it all together and indeed you get this statement for all values of x there exists a value of y so that x minus y is zero couple more examples here we're going to work through these let's rewrite each of these statements using appropriate quantifiers first one part a there exists so right away there exists a negative number x so we could say something like x is less than zero for x to be negative such that x cubed is negative eight piece it all together we get there exists some negative value x such that x cubed is negative 8 kind of fancy looking how about next one for every that's like saying for all positive number that's a delta is what we call that 
delta. Now say for every positive delta, we say for every delta bigger than zero, every positive delta, there is, that's just like there exists, there exists a positive number, this thing right here, that's epsilon, epsilon. All right, so there exists a positive number, epsilon, another number bigger than zero. Put it all together, for all delta bigger than zero, every positive delta, there exists an epsilon bigger than zero. And there you go. Two different examples of using quantifiers to write out some statement, in specific, some mathematical statements. What else? Well, there's this situation in which sometimes we let a function represent the truth value of a statement which involves one or more variables. So, for instance, say we had this equation right here, sine squared x minus 1 equals 0. We could just represent that statement by using the function p of x. So, we're going to let p of x actually represent this statement's truth value. Whatever we plug in for x into p, it would simultaneously get plugged into the sine squared of x into the statement, and there will be some truth value associated with that. And as we say here, p of x indicates the truth value of that statement for any value of x. So we'll use that in a bit, but also there's negations of quantified statements. So there is this symbol right here this tilde of course we use that for a negation symbol and we could put that in front of some other quantifier to negate it and we can also use this symbol right here it's like a slash backslash and you would put that actually through the symbol it would mean the same thing in negating that quantifier so we often use that in terms of there exists and equals and we can use these couple of negation symbols to negate those quantifiers as well even though equals isn't necessarily a quantifier but so there does not exist notice we but not negate the exist part there does not exist but equivalently we could also write that same symbol with the backslash to it they mean the same thing that does not exist or does not equal. You could, a lot of times people have seen this before, does not equal, equal sign with the backslash through it, but technically you could write it as the negation of the equal. So that does not equal. Here's another example. Consider this statement. Everyone in the class has brown hair. So it's just a statement. It's either true or false. Say you're in a class. Then the negation of the statement is equivalent to saying someone in the room does not have brown hair. Think about it. For all the people in the class, they got brown hair. Then the negation of that statement is there's got to be at least one person in the room that does not have brown hair. We could represent this through a function, p of x, but you could use whatever symbol you want. And we could let x has brown hair so you say here's a person x wherever they are they either have brown hair or they don't and p of x either true or false so then we could combine this now and say okay p of x is the statement x has brown hair and then we could turn that into the statement that we were first talking about everyone in the class has brown hair as the quantified statement boxed in on the bottom right for all x p of x what's that saying for all the people in the class for all the people in the class
They have brown hair. So we could do that. And then we could talk about truth value. But also, we could negate this statement as follows. Consider. Here's the statement for all the people in the class that got brown hair. Everybody in the class got brown hair. Negate that. And like we said before, that's like saying there exists at least one person in the class that does not have brown hair. There exists a person in the class such that they don't have brown hair. Now, lastly, we're going to look at an example in which we're going to figure out the truth value of each of these statements that are given as quantifiers. All right, this first one, part A. Let's just write out what this means in words. All right, we got a for all x, for all x, and then there exists a y or a value y such that such that x times y is 1. So, this is a statement using quantifiers. The question is, is it true? Well, let's think about it. If x times y is 1, then for all x, we can find a y such that x times y is 1. If we find x and isolate it by dividing both sides by y, we get x is 1 over y. So pick any two real numbers, x and y. This is going to be true except when x is 0. If x is 0, then there does not exist a y such that x times y is 1. Why is that? Well, if you just set x equal to 0 and make that equal to 1 over y, then there is no real number y such that that will be true. You might try multiplying both sides by y, but then you get a false statement, 0 equals 1. So to answer this, the truth value of this statement, it's false because it's not true for all x. It's true for almost all x, except when x is 0. Second one. Let's write this one out, too. Part B. For all x, there exists a y value, if you will, such that x times y is not equal to 1. And so again, if we could solve the equation x, y equals 1 for x and get that x is 1 over y. Now, we're not trying to find when x equals 1 over y, but rather we want to know if no matter which x value we pick, there is some other y so that this is not true. And in this statement, we get a true value. Why is that the case? Because no matter which y or x you pick, there are always infinitely more x and y's so that that condition x not equal to 1 over y is true. Just for instance, just suppose x is 2, then 2 is 1 over y. Can you find a value of y so that's not true? Of course, so many. As long as y is not 1 half, then that is true. So hence, true for this statement. And there you have it. That wraps up our discussion on the introduction to quantifiers and it's mad and beats so more of this logic stuff to come later. <laughs>
Thank you.